Okay, so hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Escape the Rat Race Radio. My guest today is Derek Mills, aka The Standards Guy. Now Derek has 30 years as a wealth and business development expert and mentor, and he's the world's foremost expert on daily standards and was the associate producer and expert featured in the Think and Grow Rich movie, Think, which was released in 2018. So Derek's also the author of the 10 Second Philosophy for Success and Happiness, published worldwide by Hay House and available on Amazon. And he's a transformational business guru who shares his message on stages worldwide and his approach is truly unique and highly in demand. However, things were not always as they are today for Derek and so I'm particularly interested to discover the key changes which he made to turn things around and achieve the level of success which he does now. So with that being said, let let me invite him into today's conversation. Derek, how are you today? I'm very good, thank you, Christian. How's your good self? A very, very good, thanks. Absolutely. And it's been, we were just saying, it's been over a year, it's gone so quickly since yeah. we first yeah. met, and that was back at the UK premiere for Correct. Think yeah. and Grow Rich in London. So yes. um, that was a wonderful day, and uh, you know, I really want to dive into that in a bit more detail in a short while. But Great. Before we do that, um, today's conversation is using daily standards to achieve your goals. Okay, yes. so, so Derek, let's jump right in. And I've shared a brief overview there of you, but for those listeners who maybe don't know everything about Derek Mills, give us a bit yes. of background to yourself. <laughs> uh, I think the key thing is that um, Derek Mills didn't know much about Derek Mills for most of his life. <laughs> and, and therein uh, lay the problem. Um, I spent probably until about 38 years old just being what I thought people would have me be, if that makes sense, as in what my clients should be and the customers and people I work with and other people, other business people, other entrepreneurs. And I um, have worked in financial services now for 32 years. Uh, most of that time, uh, up until my, my breakthrough, was trying to find, figure out what I should do and actually trying to be what I thought other people would have me be. So, um, needless to say, the reason I'm having this, con we're having this conversation today is because I struggled um, to be that person because you can't be not you. And if you try and be not you, you can't be happy because you can't be happy as not you. So you have to therefore discover your true self. And that's the journey I went on, discovering who I was. And um, after 17 years of being broke and not being able to pay my bills and having depression and not great relationships and messing up in every area you could mess up in your, in, in your life uh, almost um what it came down to was I, had, I made a decision to live life another way to live life as me which i called the true self and what i discovered was that my true self never mind being a loser and a failure and a depressive my true self was actually a complete genius and, and I was able to turn my life around by tapping into that genius. And the more I tapped into it, the more amazing things happened. And thankfully, I kept journals the whole of my life, not my adult life anyway. Um, I documented it, which led to a book and films and other stuff. So yes, it's, it's turned around um, based upon adhering to, to principles from with, that I've discovered and living from within and by doing something different to just setting goals. Yeah. Which wasn't working for me. Yeah. Well, that, that leads me straight into another question, which is, what is the difference between setting standards and setting goals, Derek? Okay. Um, firstly, is that most of the world knows about goals, and most of the world does not know about daily standards. <laughs> because the goals thing's been around for, for decades, hasn't it? Absolute decades. Yeah. And they tell us, they being the, the books and the authors and the teachers and all the rest of it, all around the world, even on stages I still share, um, they tell us, set, if you want to be successful, you have to set goals. Yeah. And I, I did that for 17 years and I wasn't successful and I wasn't happy and I was broke. But I'd done the things, I'd done all the, all the courses. I'm not going to mention the courses, I'm not mm -hmm. fair to, but you know all the names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the books and the tapes and the CDs yeah. and the yeah. Yeah. programs. Yeah. All of that. Um, but I was still broke and depressed age 38. So I, I made a decision then to do something different. Goals are future-based. Our goals say that um, in three weeks, three years, th three decades, wherever it might be, I will have X. And what that made me do, which I found it does for people around the world, what it made me do is attach happiness to the achievement of that goal, which is one of the problems. Because when you attach happiness to the achievement of a goal, 
what we actually do inside of us, we, we, we fra- it's, it's called fractionate. We, we break part of ourselves off and we say, we won't be completely happy until we've achieved that goal. Yeah. What you're really doing is moving happiness from here today into the future of achievement of some goal. And then when you get that goal, well, then you'll be happy. Well, there, therein lies the problem because most people in most places around the world, most of the time, do not achieve their goals. The question becomes, what happened to the happiness? I linked all this happiness to that goal. So, And then I did another goal. I didn't get that one. Another goal. I didn't get that one. Now I'm 30. And I kept doing that. Now I'm 40. Now I'm 50. And I kept linking attachment to these goals of happiness and never got the goal. So I was less happy today. But the goals make you less happy today and actually give you this distant illusion of what it's going to be in the future. Um, so, Because happiness, by the way, is a present time experience. Happiness is a now experience. We can't even be happy in the future. We can't be happy tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We're going to be happy today in this moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you, it's perhaps too short of a conversation to break that down, but when we attach happiness to the things that occur in the future, we're really moving happiness from today. That was the lesson I learned after way too long. The thing about da- daily standards uh, is daily standards are really, really simple. They say, look inside you and be you today. Discover who you are and be that person. Now, most people are not, which is why the world is way it is. Most people are not happy because they're not their true selves. But daily standards say, look inside of you and set authentic standards for who you are and live them one day at a time, as in live them just today, only today, the only day that any of us have got. There is no tomorrow. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow does not exist. If you don't believe that, there are some people in this world today that don't, will not see tomorrow. Mm. It doesn't exist. It's an illusion. Mm. Today is what we have. So daily standard says set standards from within you and live at that from today, just for today. If the good Lord gives you tomorrow, then that's your new today. And you recommit to living at those standards just for that new today. Yeah. So it's worth, it's worth exploring what, what a standard is. And the daily standard is something that we do just for today, hence the daily term. A standard is really one of five things. It's, it's a basis, criterion, level, quality, or rule that you set from within. In other words, for your authentic self. Because the philosophy that I wrote in, in, in my book it was not just about how do I become successful, it's actually how do I become happy? And how do, how do I release the gifts that must be inside of me? How, how do I become a genius? Because we're all geniuses, but we can show up as not geniuses all of our lives. But we actually are geniuses, every one of us. So it's about also being happy, but looking inside and saying to myself, in our lives, there are many, we, we behave in many ways. And some of those ways don't serve us and don't honour us. And if we keep living that way, what, we're, we're dishonouring and doing a disservice to ourselves and we're dishonouring other people and not serving them properly. So what I began to do was say to myself, in a moment of inspiration, I'm not going to set any more goals. What I'm going to do is start living by standards. What, what's a new basis for me to live in my health? relationships, money, clients, business, career, emotions. What one new rule that I could set that's more authentic and really settles with me, not the rules I've been living by, they haven't served me. What are the rules? What's the criteria that I can set for my clients? So a client might be, I don't serve this level of clients, or you must have an income of this much to be a client, or you must come to my office to, to be one of my customers or clients. I'm not traveling around the country anymore. I, I, some of the standards I set were um, not working evenings, and not working weekends. These weren't goals. I wasn't saying I'm one day I'm not going to work evenings and see my wife and kids mm-hmm. or be home at weekends. And attack. I said, this is a standard, not a goal. I'm doing this in the now, not going to what I should have, going to do it in the future. This is a now experience. So I set these standards and I basically um, changed my eating standards. As we, what are you eating right now? Okay, well, I'm eating this kind of food. Well, you wanted to have low body fat and be really fit and healthy. But if you're doing that, Derek, and you're not going to the gym and you're eating all the high fat foods and high calorie food, how does, if you've got a goal to be fit and healthy, how does the standard of what you're eating match those goals? Well, it doesn't, does it? No. So what I've also learned, as well as living by daily standards, in order to achieve any goal, if that's what you want to do, you must have the right standards because the wrong standards will keep you missing that goal. And therefore, I discovered the, the final part of the puzzle. Goals don't achieve goals. They never have. Mm. Goals don't achieve goals anywhere at any time. What achieves your goal 
is the daily standards that you live by or that you're allowed to control you, i.e. if you let anyone and life's experiences in the world choose your standards, well, more for you, I did it for long enough. However, if you decide to set it by your own standards, the basis criteria and the level of the qualities, the rules that you decide, true for you, you'll be, you'll be happier on the journey because you'll be living as your authentic self. And those standards will help you to achieve your goals because goals don't achieve goals. How you live each day determines your achievement or failure at those goals. Does that kind of, it's a very whistle-stop tool but of the philosophy and the true self and the goals and the standards together does that kind of make sense it, it does and it's opened up so many different questions in my <laughs> head it. go for it i'll try and be brief and have you got that out of the way yeah, yeah no i love that i think that's that's really helped everyone listening now and it does make a lot of sense so um, one of the things obviously with goal setting is especially at this time of year we're recording this it's mid-february so a lot of those you know new year's resolutions <laughs> would already be out the window right yeah what so, are they? Yeah. so so with the daily standards there how can someone commit and and be held accountable because on on our own and often on this journey of personal development people get switched on they read a book it may be think and grow rich it might be rich dad poor dad they understand there's a different way of doing things but maybe friends family don't get it immediately so it can feel quite lonely and applying these principles when you don't see the results straight away and there's a great um quote or, or saying that i often use with with my skate rat race members that success is a lagging indicator in right. that you've got to put the hard work in first and you don't see those results straight away but mm. unless you do the work you'll never get that success right yeah. so, so how how would you say that someone can make sure that once they've actually set out the standards and they said okay i know that this is going to help me but Sorry? sticking with yep. it yeah the last bit sticking with it yeah yeah the, the so the most important thing here is because that's, that's a big question, by the way, <laughs> but the key answer is <clears throat> you're absolutely right, because we need support mechanisms when we set our new standards. So if you roll back to what I, what I did about 15 years ago, I basically made a decision that the standards I was living by weren't even mine. I didn't know where, where they came from. When I explored them, well, that's because my friends did that. My colleagues do that. And uh, I did that because I worked for that company when I was 21. And so I just kept on doing that. When I got to uh, 38, I said, actually, you know what? These standards don't serve me anymore. They, they haven't for quite some time. Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest. For other people, they didn't even know that, that their standards were controlling them. Think, think, about, you know, um, think about your standards a bit like your subroutines. No matter what you're trying to achieve, your subroutines will be the things that actually control you and determine how you do it each day. So you've got to change those, switch them out and put new ones in. And just by the way, we have some great resources on our website uh, to show people how to do that. You can just download and begin the process because it begins with first rooting it, discovering what your old standards are, letting go of the ones that don't serve you, replacing them with new standards that do honour and serve you and allow you to honour and serve. Yeah, and then of course it's around what you're referring to, which is um, uh, reinforcing them. Yeah, and maintaining them. So we, we have structures that say you, you have your daily standards buddy, who's really great at this. It can help keep me in check in that area. It may be one person or a friend around money, and it may be somebody else around health, and somebody else around fitness, somebody else around relationships, but it's about having a buddy system. Now, I was a bit unfortunate that when I started this process, I didn't have any buddies because I didn't even know mm -hmm. what I was doing. I just kind of was doing what was coming out of me, just doing that and changing that standard and reviewing it each day and checking in and that's right. But I did have um, I did have four children. And those four children, interestingly enough, were my kind of my, my buddies, my coaches, because the first time first day I, I set my new standards out, I wrote them out and I um, created a, a, a chart and I laminated it and I went home, you know, and said, No, kids, new dad to my wife, no, no new husband, this is the new this is the new me. Um, these aren't things I'm going to do. This is me now. And our oldest two kids, who could make sense of that, the youngest really made no sense of it, the youngest two. But the, the oldest two said things like, uh, okay, okay, that, that's what you're going to be. So, and they kept me. By the way, just wanted to tell you this. If you want to stick to your standards, if you've got kids, tell them. Yeah, because they will make you stick to what you <laughs> set yeah. each day. Not your goals. Now, forget your goals. You're going to have that house and that car one day in the future. But day by day, if you get tell your children, your friends, your closest, the people that love you, close contacts, help them 
and they help you. So you stick to it. I, I can't tell you any other way because I didn't do it any other way. Mm. So my view is that you, and therefore, what I did discover over time, I then used uh, technology and, and to remind me of who I am and what I need to do. So for example, um, if I set standards around some of the actions that I did every single day or what I allowed in my life, when I didn't allow in my life, I'd use my iPhone reminder. I'd use Outlook. And people say, well, why, why have you got all this? I say, well, without this, I find it very hard to stick to my standards. So I put reminders in my diary that pop up and tell me every day. My phone, I have alarms, even alarm of when to go to bed and what I do before I go to, go to bed and when to get up and what the, what the words say on the screen when I wake up. It's like the meditation and the prayer and the exercise and all of that because I'm human. If you say to me, do the rest of your life, I might go, ooh, I'm not sure I can, but can I do it today, just for today, until I go back to bed tonight? I think I can, and, and that's what I began to do. So th that's the process. It was around having people around you that was something you tell, close confidence, that you tell in the area of the life that's important to you, different friend, different area, and ask them to support you in being that person in doing that thing, in eating that food, in taking that exercise, in saving the 20%, in letting go of the um, less resourceful relationships that you have when they try and overtake your life again. Yeah. And there's one final thing when you set your new daily standards, expect resistance. Yeah, and most people don't set goals, they'll give you that. Mm -hmm. So with daily, expect resistance, and here's why. If you're 30 years old and you've been living a certain way with people around you for the last 15 years, don't be surprised if they continue to treat you the way that you have been for the previous 15 years. So when you say, oh, I'm doing this now, and this is how I am, and I'm doing that, I'm not speaking to those people, and these really negative, destructive people, I'm letting go of those relationships, I'm eating this kind of food, I'm saving 20 cents of my income, but people around you are not used to you like that. They're going to try and treat you the old way. So you've got to be patient as you stick to your standards, as well as people around you catch up to where you now are. This is important. It's, I didn't say it's going to be easy. What I'm saying is that it works. Yeah, yeah. And there may be some difficult internal conversations that you have to have with yourself, I can imagine. In, yeah. in even some of the friends that you have nowadays, you realize that they've got some bad habits. And whenever you hang out with them, you know, you, yeah. you get pulled into that as well. So Correct. it's, it's not going to be. What, what, yeah. One of the areas of, that I said, um, when I uh, reviewed my life and set new daily standards for the whole of my life, conscious daily standards, I did it in the areas of personal health and fitness, environment, as in what I was listening to, what I was allowing into my mind and who I was around, uh, my relationships, family, emotions, career, time and money. And they were the seven areas that I focused on. Um, but you're absolutely right. I had to let some friends go. Not They weren't necessarily bad people, mm. but I had to ask myself the questions, what have they got me doing? What have they got me saying? Where have they got me going? How have they got me being? And if that isn't honouring and serving me and allowing me to honour and serve, well, don't complain in 20 years' time if you're still where you are because you're trying to stick with those people rather than be who you truly are. It sounds like a judgment and maybe it is. Yeah. I mean, it is very true about the environment and the people. I, I made the decision four years, just over four years now, to, yeah. to quit my job because I didn't want to I didn't want to do there and it, it, it was it was a big jump I hadn't got all the answers I hadn't got a, a replacement income at that time but I knew that I just needed to make a switch I needed to get out of the environment and uh, the people that I was surrounded with day to day they were just on a different path to myself and so I saw the difference when I just took that bold move and it's paid off dividends over the last few years yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. indeed one of the other things I'd like to ask you, Derek, in terms of really helping someone commit to these standards is how important is having a really strong reason why and, and a vision. So you're looking into the future and we've talked about goals being a future based thing and attaching happiness to it. But we often hear when we read personal development books, the importance of really having a, a future vision. So so how, how would you you know add to that? Actually, it's um. I'm not sure, okay, here's the thing. A future vision or a vision, and there's a difference. A future vision may be that um, here's what I'm gonna be one day, yeah? And you aspire to be that, and constantly you'll notice the gap between what your vision of yourself is and who you are. But you have this vision that we're gonna be this in three years or five years and 10 years. And we've all met people, I'm sure we have, 
who had visions of who they were going to be when they retired. You know, when, when I get 50, 55, I'll retire and I'll do that and I'll, I'll fish and I'll go for long walks and I'll go to the grandkids every other day and I'll, um, and I'll do that charity work I've always wanted to do and I'll bake. I've always wanted to bake since I was six when grandma used to bake in the kitchen. And in other words, you're going to wait till you're 55 to be yourself. So there's a vision of what they have. So let me just throw something at that in and say, look, what if the vision isn't a future vision? What if you hold a vision of your truth right now and each day you be that person? And that's more difficult because I don't know what's, I'm going to live that person today. So there's a scenario. You get to the office and the old you could have shown up. In fact, your vision shows up and you put your vision on or you step into your vision today and you be that person and you give that love and you give you give the care and you call you call your kids or you do go out home early and you go and see them and you do bake cakes and you do whatever you want you want to do but you be the vision right now so you keep the vision itself today and this is not what most people will, will, will teach but it's what got me out of the mire and what i we used to do in the early days when i used to um get to about midday or one or two o'clock I saw my vision failing. He was like, oh, look, I can't make it. It works hard in these problems and these stresses. I used to go back to my car. So I go back. I sometimes used to visualize in my car in the morning. Then I would go back to my car at lunchtime. People would laugh at me sitting in the car with my eyes closed. Were you sleeping in your car, Derek? No, no. Or, or yeah, I was just sleeping. There. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't be honest, haven't you? So, <laughs> so I'd be in my car visualizing. And I'd be visualizing myself in my vision of the second half of the day of me at my best for the second half of the day until I got back to bed tonight, I'd see the next two appointments going, one like with my wife and my children and people, whatever I was doing that day, the vision would be of me at my best today because you know, it's, it's a now experience. It's, we, we, we've got to work on today. I think the pull of tomorrow is strong, but I struggled for 17 years and I've spoken on now four, on four continents all around the world. People, people keep saying, that's right. We've set goals and we haven't achieved most of our goals. This is, you know, well, do, do your own research, probably done it all anyway. Yeah. Most people don't achieve their goals. So how come? 100 years we've been talking about this, but most people, it doesn't work. When we're going to start realizing, I know the words say, we've got to have a vision. Yeah. And in the Bible, it says without a vision, I think it's in um, Proverbs, I think it says, without a vision, the people perish. But if you look, it doesn't say anywhere with, about a vision of the future. Mm -hmm. Because I, I believe in the Bible, as it's known in a book, yeah. um, no, kind of from God, it kind of says, actually, don't be some person in the future. I think it's actually saying, be that vision now. Be you now. Be good now. Love now. Be kind now. Share now. Help the homeless now. Make a difference now. Yes. It's about present time. And I can, if you then move to the New Testament, uh, where you've got this guy that walked around 2,000 years ago called Christ, and um, He's mentioned in all, the, in all the books, he's mentioned in the, uh, the Quran, uh, the Torah, the Bible. So we know you, this guy walks around the planet. The, who he was is down to each individual belief system. For me, son of God and all that. But he walked around and he, he gave us a prayer, which we used to say at school. And if you remember this, if you did this at school, I said the Lord's Prayer every day. Mm -hmm. in yeah, what sure. Called assembly. It kind of, I didn't, I'm not saying I didn't get the Lord's Prayer, but when I got to about 38, and older, four words kept bouncing back to me again and again. He kept saying, give us this day. Do you remember that bit? Mm, give okay. us this day, our daily bread. Yeah. Give us this day. Give us, like, well, so why didn't he say give us this quarter? Give us this month. Give us this fiscal program. Give us this 20-year program. Give us this one-month plan. He said, give us this day. And I think he meant what he said and said, but he meant he knew it was about being all you can be today. The vision is of the greatest you today. I'm not saying it's easy. And when he tells you it's going to be easy, he's not telling you the truth, but I'm saying that if you want to be true to you and have your talent show up sooner, be you today. Hold the vision of you today, being the best you can today. And then midnight, when your head goes on your pillow, don't be you anymore. Let it all go. And if you wake up the next morning, recommit to being that vision today. That's at odds with things that I hear on stages. I go on stage, the person before is another coach or speaker, and they're saying, blah, 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 and set your goals and hold your vision for the future. But the person after me says that, and I say, I say to the audience, How's that working out for you? And they're like, but exactly. And if it's, we're all going to giggle and laugh about it, then why don't we do something about it and do something different? If it's working for everyone, we'd all be in a different place, and so will the world. That vision of the future and your goals is not working. I don't care that people don't agree with me. What I'm saying is that show me where that works, please. Yeah. If so many millions of people have so long, how come most people just buy the next book and then the next program? 
let me tell you the difference, the difference it made for me in case your, your, your listeners don't even, well, certainly won't know who I am, but um, let's share a bit of that. After 17 years in, in, in the same, on a self-employed basis, I stayed in the same office selling the same products. In other words, I didn't suddenly change my job or go and go into property or anything else. Same business, same office, in fact, with the same products. From getting broke and having the house repossessed and cars repossessed and bailiffs in the house, counting furniture, not compared to council tax, all of that stuff and being depressed. And working six days a week, I went to three days a week. Yeah, and I increased my income by 10 times in exactly what we've been discussing in the last 20 minutes in the same office in this, with the same products and changed me. And within, within, to increase my income by 10 times, within three years, I made my first million. In the second year, I made a million. In, sorry, the four, in the fourth year, I made a million dollars just that year working part time. That's when people turned up and said, hmm. What have you been doing differently? I was just used to this guy. <laughs> you're in this organization where they were all self employed, earning self employed commissions and fees, and you've gone from being the guy at the bottom of the, of the list, and I kid you not, 1,200, to the company's now 1,600 strong, and you're working part time, earning more than everyone apart from about 27 people working part time. How have you done that? That's the power. And from there, it led to me realizing if I stay in my truth, which is the part which hopefully you'll get and your listeners will get, the more I stuck to my daily standards that came from within me, my authentic self, the more my authentic self was in my day. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The more my authentic self was in my day, the happier I was in my day. And from that place, more talents hitherto unknown to me began to show up. I realized that whilst I was once, a, you may not know, but I was once a stutterer, I couldn't speak I properly. I was once a stutterer. I became a speaker and began to speak. Now they pay me to speak thousands and thousands of pounds, six figures in some cases, well, in one case, not many cases, mm -hmm. to speak um, on, on a circuit. And after that, I then um, began to coach people, mentor people, um, got asked my hey house to write a book, which became the 10 Second Philosophy book, um, got into the Keeper of the Keys movie, went to premiere tomorrow night for the third Keeper of the Keys, the Keys movie. From there, the people that um, saw me in the Keep of the Keys said the biggest personal development brand in the world is that they're making a film in association with the Napoleon Hill Foundation. Mm -hmm. We heard about your daily standards and how you use daily standards to achieve your goals. The, bear in mind, this is Thinking Grow Rich. They talk about goals for about 100 years. Yeah. said, we want you to think about daily standards in the film to help people to achieve their goals. Yeah. Does this make sense to you? It's incredible. It's, no, it's it's I really said, incredible. I said, I said, yeah, I said yes. I'll be in the movie. Like, yeah. yeah. In about ten seconds, I said the answer was yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and then and then you became executive producer as well. Is that correct? Well, yeah, exactly. And then I basically looked at what was going on. And I thought um, I've cut, so I've read the book, you know, in, in my twenties. But uh, what I wanted to do now, can I get involved in this? Not just as a mm. what they call as a talent in the movie. Could I get involved in this? Because I don't know if the book has been going for ninety years, this film would last for at least 90 years and I'll be sharing about daily standards in that. Think about it. When you and I have gone and our kids have gone, maybe their kids have gone, there'll still be someone talking about, yeah, if you want to achieve your goals, that's great, but you've got to have your daily standards because you know what? You've got to have the daily because you live each day and if you use your daily standards, you'll achieve your goals. Like, you don't just jump to the top of the stairs, do you? You look at the, the 12 or 13 steps in the middle and your daily standards like this, raise your standards close to your goal. Raise your standards close to your goal. And as you raise your standards, you get close to the goal. The goal is not achieved by the goal. It's achieved by the raising of the standards or by the raising of who you be, who you are in that moment in your job. Yeah. And just, just so people are aware, I'm, I'm aware that times I sound a bit, a bit woolly and a bit fluffy. And that's absolutely fine. That's who I am. But the business I'm working for, one of my businesses, which I do three days a week, is wealth management. And I manage tens of millions. In fact, um, but I would under all 150, probably 150 to 160 million pounds. Yeah, which is all, what I do here so yeah. in my practice for other people as a wealth manager and um, around where to invest, how to invest, at risk, making the money grow, being like, more efficient from the tax perspective. So I'm a very, I'm a very, very working with numbers, markets, funds, rates, asset classes, all of that. Yet I know the success comes from all of this not from all of that. And my clients that meet me, the millionaires and the multi-millionaires that give me money to look after, they know it too. This is not woolly stuff. What got me the most clients was being my true self and noticing that other people noticed. 
So they said to me, can you be our advisor? The other guys aren't quite like you. Can we give you some money to invest for us? Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure people listening right now, Derek, are thinking, wow, I need some of this in my life. Like, what, what can I do right now? Where can I go? What would you advise for them? And I know you have your own seven step system, the perfect um, life. Perhaps that's a good place to begin. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a good place to start. Down, get the download, go to the website, dailysanders.com yeah. um, and start with actually to have a few your old standards. You may not be conscious of them, but you're, you're using them anyway. It's like gravity, you know, whether you know about it, it's still affecting you. So go there, get the download, fill it, fill it in, and then if you've got any query, queries or questions, send us a message. The second thing to do is that the book, The 10 Second Philosophy by Hay House, it's on iTunes, it's on Audible, um, or you can get the hard copy, but you know, go to Audible, go to iTunes, listen in your car. For the next 12 months, listen to it in your car, listen to it before you go to bed, listen when you wake up, make it change you. Yeah, yeah. Well, Derek, I knew that our time would fly and, and it has, and there's so much more that we could talk about and, and hopefully we'll get that opportunity one day. But um, Indeed, for, the, for the final words for our listeners, I always yeah. ask our guests, for, for those who know that there's a better life waiting for them, they may be stuck in a traffic jam, they're squashed up on the, the underground on the way to work. What would you like to say to them if maybe fear or something is just holding them back from taking that next step? Okay. I think when I when you asked that kind of question, it immediately took me back to how I used to feel um, when I was not being myself and I knew there was more to me than was showing up in my life. I, I just knew it. I, I couldn't explain it when you're broke and depressed and not making much money and chasing Peter to pay Paul. And it's hard to think there's more to me. But, you know, anyone listening to our words right now, if you're feeling there's more to me than has shown up so far in my life, I know that there's more for me in my life and those that I love then it's about saying to yourself, choose to keep on living this frustrated life. It's a choice. Or choose to take a risk and become yourself and discover the talent you don't even know you've got yet. Yeah. So one of the things um, that I would want, to, would want to share is that just, um, what have you got to lose? The reason why I stepped out into my true self and set new standards is my life was so poor on every level, you can not just monetary, but poor. I thought, I'm going to do this because I've got nothing to lose. And the people that, that, the people that will fail at this the most, and perhaps the words aren't very good, but I just use, but those that will fail at this the most are kind of those with a, with a nice, reasonably comfortable life. You're kind of okay. Things are okay. Why would I want to change? You're probably not going to change. I'm not going to say what people won't say. You probably won't change. Those that will change are those that want to, need to, must do. If you want to, need to, must change, you'll get what I'm saying right now. If not, these just be words that Derek and Christian have that will pass you by and maybe some point your unconscious gives them back to you next week or next month at some point. But here's the thing. Take courage. Both hands. And run with it. Yeah, I can't make you do anything. If you're in your car right now, listen to this, wherever you are, I can't make you do anything. But you will know. Part of you will recognise what I'm saying and you will know that you need to do something about this now. I don't care whether you're right to me or not. What I care about is you do something about it. Take control. Let go of the past. That was yesterday. Now you've got today. What a blessing. Use it as you've been given it. Well, I can't add anything better to uh, end our conversation today. Thank you so much, Derek. And uh, other than, of course, um, finding a copy and, and getting a copy of your book from Amazon, yeah. Yeah. where's the best place to find you online? Websites or social media? Yes, yeah, so certainly social media uh, is, is, is Facebook. I tend to just put my, put my stuff out in there, put the philosophy out there, uh, quotes and comments pretty much every, every other day or a few times a day if, if I'm feeling things coming out. Um, as far as content, the, the blog and videos, uh, YouTube and and um, the website, just go to dailystandards.com. You'll find all the links to there, access to the Think and Grow Rich film, the book, the previous, the previous films that I've been in, and other resources, um, some of which are chargeable, some of which are free, and just use them. And if, you got, if, if it's not working or you find that something's missing, just give me, just give me a call. And I'm about to write, um, give me a, uh, an email. I'm about to write a, a blog um, and a mailing tool to all of my list about someone that when I did a conference for an insurance company in Jamaica, I've been there three times now doing a conference talk in Jamaica. How good is that? <laughs> and um, and uh, being paid to talk and, uh, and going back to my, my dad's home country. And um, this is the full one worked for an insurance company and was one of just an also-ran agent. I kid you not, 
she wrote to me last week saying that she'd been following my stuff and reading the book and following my quotes on Facebook and reading the book and sticking to a daily standards. What she wrote to me about um, last week was to say, Derek, I'm now number one in that company and I owe my success to you and what you've been teaching over the last four years. Now, I know, you know, I'm going to say, I wrote back to her and said, you don't know anything to me. <laughs> a lot of people hear what I say, but they don't do it. Your success is down to you. Yeah, so just make clear of that. But the point is, the difference it made in her life, and I had the, um, one of her senior managers, one exec in the company, email me just to give me some words and tell me what, what had happened, how great she was, and, and to be thankful. But the idea is that, you know what, it can change. If you can go from being broke and depressed and basically get to a point where you say, this isn't even my life, I'm not going to live my life anymore like this, that was me, to the place, place where you're uh, changing the lives of tens of thousands of people around the world and you find you've got talents to speak and to coach and to write and to produce and to exec and to run successful businesses, then it means if there's more to me, there's more to you. I, I don't know, I don't want to go on because your time is time's limited, but no, here's, here's the thing, life's short, when are you going to do you? That's right. And it's easier to do that with somebody else as well. So don't feel that it's, you know, something you have to do alone. Just reach out. Of course, we've got the Escape the Rat Race community. You have all of the great connections that you have as well, Derek. So yeah, reach out to me. Yeah, I have no one reach out to me. So reach out to me. Oh, thank you so much for sharing the standards with us today, Derek. And I really look forward to the next time that we catch up. And I'll share all of the links and everything that you've mentioned today in the show notes. So if you're listening right now, just hit on the show notes and you can go and uh, follow Derek and uh, connect with both of us. So Derek, thanks again. And uh, we'll catch up again real soon. Okay. Thanks, Christian.